Earlier this week, I decided for the first time ever to venture into the expensive and often ludicrously profitable world of ASIC cryptocurrency mining. I've been meaning to check it out for a while, and when I finally got the opportunity to test a machine out for myself, I grabbed it. Unfortunately, the ASIC miner I had access to was the Bitmain's Antminer D3, a Dash miner that was already well on its way to being entirely unprofitable after electrical costs. But one good thing that came out of that experience was that I finally hunkered down to do some real research about ASIC miners in general, and I spoke to a few people who have been at it for a while to get their thoughts on the matter. Armed with this new knowledge, I decided to make a video discussing the good, the bad, and the ugly parts of ASIC mining while also investigating the profitability of some of the most popular ASIC miners on the market right now. Be warned that we're not touching on the Baikal's giant X10 in this video because it's mining some obscure cryptocurrencies and it's not something that I really feel comfortable discussing right now with profitability levels in flux like they are. Anyways, as I explained in my review of Bitmain's Antminer D3, ASIC miners are far more profitable at mining certain algorithms and coins than say a GPU or a CPU. The reason for this is that they're specifically optimized for the job. But while this optimization is by far their biggest strength, to me, it's also the main reason why I'm hesitant to invest in my own ASIC machines, but I'll get to that in a minute. First, let's have a look at some of the pros and cons involved in being an ASIC miner. The biggest pro of ASIC miners is what I said like five seconds ago. ASIC miners are the most powerful pieces of mining hardware you can get for certain coins. Mining currencies like Bitcoin and Litecoin directly isn't even worth it anymore unless you're rocking a decent ASIC. And other small currencies like Dash have also started to follow suit. Once an ASIC miner becomes available for a new coin, you can bet that mining that coin with a CPU or GPU will become a fool's errand. It would be akin to you trying to play Destiny 2 on your smartphone versus on my Threadripper 1950X system with a 1080 Ti. The next big benefit to using these machines is, well, no, that's basically it. They're really good at one task and they make a whole lot of money doing it. Now, when it comes to where these things fall short though, the list is a whole lot lengthier and the cons across the board are almost identical to the ones I experienced with the Antminer D3. The first, most obvious issue is just how much these things go for. Almost all of the popular and profitable ASICs right now will cost you in the ballpark of $1,200 all the way up to $2,000. That's more than most people are able to afford without taking out a loan or selling a kidney. And those numbers only really apply if you're buying the miners in the batches that they ship in from Bitmain's website directly or any other mining website. If you're looking to buy one off of Amazon to get it right now, you're going to need to pay a massive price premium. How much of a price premium? Well, only about double the usual price. Nothing major. And what makes matters even worse is that none of the most profitable miners come with an included power supply no matter where you buy it new, which will probably set you back another 230 plus dollars. And that brings me to the next issue of ASIC miners, availability, and the time it takes before you can actually get your hands on one of these things. Unless you've got an early and secured your order, you're probably not going to find the miner you're looking for in stock or for a reasonable price on the official websites. And when you are able to place your order, you'll only receive your miner when it ships in one of the predetermined batches, many of which are only sent out a month or two later at least. When you do eventually get your miner and start collecting your coin, there's a whole new set of issues you'll need to be aware of. These issues include power consumption, heat output, and pure, unadulterated, completely insufferable noise. In order to mine as well as they do, ASICs use a butt ton of electricity. Almost all of the decent miners right now consume around 1,000 watts or more from the wall, and if that doesn't sound like a lot, consider that one of the best GPUs to mine with right now, the GTX 1080 Ti, only draws a maximum of around 250 watts. And in the case of the GPU, that number can actually be significantly lowered due to optimization, where as far as I know, that's not really the case with most ASICs because if you mess with the frequencies, you void your warranty. Obviously, if you're not paying for your electricity or you pay very little for it, this won't be an issue for you, at least as far as the cost is concerned. But even if you're comfortable with using that much power, you probably won't be comfortable for long. The heat output from these machines is absolutely massive, a heck of a lot more than if you were only mining with graphics cards, unless you had like six or so graphics cards. Anyways, this can be a good thing in winter since you probably won't need to spend any money on a room heater. So everybody in the Northern Hemisphere, good luck this winter. But in summer, it's pretty much near unbearable. However, nothing, and I mean nothing, is as unbearable and obnoxious as the racket that these things make. Of course, GPUs also make a whole lot of noise if they get a little hot under the collar, but they don't even come close to the same level of ear cancer that the majority of ASICs produce. At idle, they're not all that bad, only sounding like a fairly powerful hair dryer, but as soon as those high static pressure fans ramp up, they ramp up hard. The noise coming from those little machines is enough to drive anyone in a five mile radius insane, and my condolences go out to all of the dogs in the neighborhood. And for those of you who have asked, can you replace the fans to make it more efficient? 
Yes, you can. However, one, you're gonna void your warranty, and then two, you try to find more efficient, less noisy 7,000 RPM fans. The big thing about ASIC monitor fans is that they spin at such a high RPM to dissipate all of the heat that's going over the heat sink to make sure they stay cool so that you can continue mining 24 seven. Still, even though ASIC monitors have essentially only one redeeming quality, their mining prowess, that one quality is more than enough to make them look mighty tempting indeed, especially if you have the cash for it. How tempting you ask though? Well, Bitmain's Antminer S9 is by far the most profitable ASIC right now, and it's easy to see why. The S9 mines Bitcoin at a massive 13.5 five tera hashes per second and draws about 1323 watts from the wall with those numbers minus power costs which will vary by country and location and at current bitcoin rates the s9 should be able to earn 34 dollars and 77 cents per day that's over $1,000 a month. If you bought the miner directly from Bitmain before it was sold out, it would have cost you $1,415. That means that the miner would have been able to pay itself off in only 41 days, and then you're making pure cash. Even if I mined the S9 at my current electrical cost of 11 cents per kilowatt hour, I'd still be able to earn about $31 per day. Unfortunately, the miner is currently sold out on Bitmain's website, and the only new ones currently available on Amazon are selling for ridiculous amounts of money. Bitmain is selling their S9 for a massive $3,900. $195 on there, and if we take that into our calculations, the machine would need almost 115 days to fully pay itself off, and that's without electricity costs. Well, that's obviously not nearly as exciting as 41 days, it's actually still mightily impressive. I have no doubt you'll struggle to find any non-crypto investment with those kind of returns. While the S9 is probably the most profitable ASIC machine you can buy right now that mines actual regular currency, there's a slightly cheaper, almost as good alternative called the Antminer T9. The T9 also mines Bitcoin directly and has a very respectable hash rate of 12.5 terahashes per second. Unfortunately, it's far less power efficient than the S9, drawing a huge 1,576 watts at the wall. Even so, the T9 still puts up a heck of a fight against the S9, and after deducting electricity costs, the T9 should bring in on about $29 per day at current rates. That's only $2 less than the S9. But before you get too excited, the T9 seems pretty much impossible to find being sold out right now, which sort of makes sense as they seem to have been mainly just a primer for the release of the S9. So if the question was, are ASIC Bitcoin miners profitable? The answer would be yes. Some of them are totally confirmed profitable right at this moment. However, there are a lot of other newish ASIC miners that are much, much less so and are hardly worth getting at all. The AntMiner D3, which I reviewed earlier this week, springs to mind. The influx of ASIC miners into the Dash network has proven to be catastrophic for the X11 algorithm. Countless high-powered machines flooded the network in a short time span and the mining difficulty rate skyrocketed as a result. While those who got the first or even second batch of D3s were making a fair bit of profit, anyone who got their hands on one after that were and continue to be crap out of luck. Even just about a week after I released the review of the D3, its profitability took another hit. Back then, it was already only bringing in around seven or eight dollars, and as of right now, that number has dropped to around five dollars per day. Unless you can get one of these things for free, I can't really see the point in running one for much longer unless you want a really expensive space heater. Another miner that seems to have taken a similar path to the D3 is the Antminer L3 Plus, a script miner with a hash rate of around 504 mega hashes per second. As was the case with the D3, the L3 Plus was released and shipped, and early adopters were making bundles. Not too long after, after that though, profits began to nosedive just like they did with the D3. It's a much more subtle nosedive, but a nosedive nonetheless. Currently, L3 Plus owners can expect to make around $7 per day, which isn't bad, but most probably not worth it for many people, and especially not worth it for the price of the miner. And that's the thing, really. Unless you can get into the game early with a brand new ASIC miner, there's a large chance you'll be left behind in the dirt. By the time that most people catch on that an ASIC is super profitable and order their own, it's almost already too late to get in on the massive early profits. Even though the miners like the S9 and T9 are fantastic and have proven that they can be profitable over many months, there's no guarantee that the floor won't fall out from under them at any time, just like what happened with the D3. Obviously, pretty much nothing in the cryptocurrency world is guaranteed, and there will always be at least a little risk to take on, and ASICs just seem like the most risky. The main reason that the S9 is still tremendously profitable, in fact, has nothing to do with its mining performance. No, in fact, the S9 has encountered the same mining difficulty issues that the D3 has encountered, but the difference comes in the value of the coins that it's actually mining. The D3 encountered 
the unfortunate issue of seeing the Dash cryptocurrency crash upon the first batch of miners hitting people's mining dungeons. But since the S9 is mining Bitcoin, it has experienced an opposite fortune. The value of Bitcoin has become something mythic and temperamental. That, my friends, is why the S9 is still profitable and why you can pay it off in a few months, because Bitcoin's dollar exchange is astronomical. These machines are only good for mining, and most of them are only good for mining using one or two algorithms, mining a handful of coins. If something were to happen and the coin you're mining crashes right through the earth to China, you're basically stuck with a nigh worthless box that will be very hard to resell at a semi-acceptable price. At least with GPU mining, if one coin crashes, you can switch to a different one without skipping a beat. And if one day you decide that mining isn't for you or all of the coins you mine are dead, you could always resell your cards to gamers or other GPU miners whenever you want. Probably for a little bit of a loss though. Again, I'm not saying that ASIC mining is stupid or that they're unprofitable, hot, noisy messes. Well, actually, I mean, they are definitely those last two things. They're noisy and hot, but some of them are far from unprofitable. All I'm saying is that even though GPU mining has a worse return on investment time right now, than certain ASIC miners, I'd still have them instead. There's some sort of peace of mind, however small to be found in GPU mining, that I just don't have in ASIC mining. Even if the rewards of Bitcoin ASIC mining can often far outweigh the risks, it all feels far too volatile and all too set in stone at the same time for me to feel comfortable fully committing to it. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm a chicken baby that should just shuck it up and buy an ASIC miner and reap the reward. Or maybe I'm not rich enough to throw away $1,500 to $3,000 in the hope of making more income. But what do you all think? Are you guys buying ASIC miners? How much cash have you made off of them thus far? If you have any, do you have a batch coming? Do you think that the risk outweighs the reward or do you think the reward outweighs the risk? Let me know either down in the comments or over on Twitter. I am at UF Disciple. If you're looking to pick up an ASIC miner right now, though, you could use our Amazon affiliate code for Amazon down in the video description. It won't cost you a cent, but it gives us a small return that helps support the channel and everything we do here. You can also support the channel by becoming a patron over on Patreon. Becoming a patron gives you access to plenty of behind the scenes content you get to help us decide on upcoming videos and so much more. So if you're interested, you can click that card right there or head on over to patreon.com forward slash UFD tech. Also, we currently have a giveaway going on right now for this Zotac 1070 Ti Amp Extreme from Wootware. They're helping us celebrate reaching 40,000 subscribers on this channel by giving this puppy away to one of you. The link for how to enter is in the description below and giveaway is open globally, so don't be shy on checking out how to enter. Anyways, we're going to wrap this up there. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers. Unfortunately, the miners currently sold out of bidding. 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 Unfortunately,